Let me ask you this. Do you trust this administration? This is what our closest allies think of us based off the jackassery and the buffoonery, which I know a lot about. I want to hug something because I feel so much better now. Well, guess what, hard charger? You wouldn't have had to get all those people out if you had executed a plan that didn't look like it was drawn with a crayon by a five-year-old. All right, folks, hey, this is your 29 August update for Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, we're gonna be concentrating, there's very little on Iraq that I really felt was germane today. So we're gonna concentrate on events in Afghanistan, seeing as how that's the big deal. All right, so obviously at this point, everybody's heard about the, uh, the double tap IED strike uh, that killed 12 Marines and one Navy corpsman, somewhere around 90 dead. Honestly, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't take the time to update those numbers. The bottom line is, Bad, real bad, bad attack, terrible. The big piece is that ISIS clay, ISIS K has claimed responsibility. We did strike back and supposedly killed some planners. All right, good to go, all right? I'm glad to see that. Intel is that we're still expecting another attack. Now, let's get into the ugly because the rest of it's freaking ugly, guys. It is ugly. A video from Ruptly shows the Taliban forces have sealed off the airport entrance. Many are geared up in U.S. gear, body armor, weapons. Uh, there was a Humvee being used to help secure the entrance to that airport. So they're definitely utilizing our gear. Now, let's go to the foreign press because this is telling. And I've been using the foreign press a lot, both UK and out of Australia because they are not happy. Our allies are being very vocal. So in Australian news, they are ridiculing a CBS news story, which is claiming that climate change is the reason for the rise of the Taliban. They're touting drought, et cetera, driving farmers into the arms of the, the Taliban. The whole thing is ridiculous on its face, and it's an attempt to change the narrative and switch focus, which the woke corporate media cabal is obviously they've obviously gotten their directions from the White House or wherever it is they're taking their directions from and they're all on the same plan now and the plan is to save the ship try to save the ship the Taliban has made a claim that they are going to do their part to fight climate change you know I just got to I gotta stop for a second because I've got my, my heart is heating up. It warms my heart. I am, you know, I could get a little something here. I just feel like I wanna cuddle up and I wanna, I wanna hug something because I feel so much better now that the Taliban are gonna help fight climate change. Thank God, thank the Lord. Obviously, this is pandering to the U.S. fundamentalist wokesters that are running this absolute joke, disaster of an administration. Because anybody who knows anything about Afghanistan knows that there is going to be an orgy of violence underway as soon as the cameras start roll stop rolling. Let's move over to the UK. Niall Gardner, referring to Biden's, Biden's 27 August speech, you know, the one, the latest one, at least the latest one I'm aware of. Quote, we are witnessing the death spiral of the most calamitous U.S. administration of modern times. Biden is, quote, the antithesis of Ronald Reagan. This event is, quote, trashing the U.S.-U.K. special relationship, going on to say that the U.S.-U.K. relationship is at its lowest point since the Suez Crisis in 1956, which was the second Arab-Israeli war. 
where Britain was, that is kind of interesting because in that event, the Suez Crisis of 1956, Britain ended up being humiliated, long and short. Eisenhower was Eisenhower warned them not to, not to put troops on the ground there in the in the Suez area. They did anyway, along with France. It was this big dust up, and Britain was humiliated. And it's kind of coincidental and interesting that his, uh, yeah, historians look back on that event as as the marker that started Britain's decline as one of the major world powers. Some more quotations, you guys. You guys got to hear this. This is what our closest allies think of us based off the jackassery and the buffoonery, which I know a lot about. That's been going on recently. Quote, abandoning not only Afghanistan, but the NATO alliance, the transatlantic alliance, this is from the UK, and doing immense damage to America's standing on the international stage, which I think I said in my first video that I did on this thing, that we will be geopolitically reaping the repercussions of this event, in my opinion, for a century, if not longer. They go on to call it, of the speaking of the U.S., humiliation on the world stage. The House of Commons has condemned Biden's handling of the Afghan situation. Unanimous across the board, Labor Party, Conservative Party, freaking Brexit people, doesn't matter. Unanimous condemnation of Biden across the spectrum. He is viewed as an absolutely clueless, quote, absolutely clueless leader. That's a no-shitter. Going on to say it will take decades for the U.S. to recover once this calamity is over. And I think it's going to be longer than decades, folks. I really do. And we would love to have a, a longer conversation about why that is. Again from the U.K., they knew that the withdrawal was coming, but they were expecting a condition-based withdrawal rather than just setting a date. It was not coordinated with the Brits or with NATO allies. They were very surprised when we surrendered Bagram Air Base. They're highly critical of us giving biographical data to the Taliban. And if you're not familiar with that, that's the thumbprints and the eye scans and stuff to, uh, to um, identify both American citizens and the Taliban, and I don't know about if they've got the data on other NATO ally citizens. The Biden administration overall continues to display an appalling lack of leadership. We still got Americans, unknown number, not sure how many at this point, NATO allies, allied Afghans who are unable to get out, and there's still, as far as I've seen, no sign of a plan. Now, reports are emerging that the in the initial planning or the choosing the initial plan that Biden ignored the plan and the advice of his military advisors and that the overall plan came, plan came from the State Department. So that may be why we've seen uh, more of a focus on uh, deer in the headlights blinking recently. Overall, the whole maneuver was naive and it was foolish. So let me ask you this, moving from news to straight up commentary and opinion. Let me ask you this, do you trust this administration? Have you thought about the impacts of what has happened? What about the loss of the dollar's reserve currency status? Have any of you thought about that? I talked a little bit about that yes, day before yesterday. But if that comes to fruition, and I think it will for several reasons, some of which I laid out a couple days ago, the dollar is going to lose even more value. It's going to crash the market. It's going to crash our economy. Now, if you don't, if you're not familiar with the concept of the world reserve currency, just look it up on Wikipedia or something. It'll it's really not that complex. Bottom line, it's a low-risk asset that when things go bad, 
countries, people, they fly to it. They go to, well, I'll, I'll get some dollars then. I'll exchange my, my Turkish lira for dollars because the dollar is solid, right? So the administration is already started, already changing the narrative with the media cabal uh, picking up the storyline, buying it hook, line, and sinker, and spouting out the propaganda through the United States people, citizens. The administration is counting still on the American people to forget. They think that we're going to go back to worrying about buying things in bulk at Costco and picking the chickweed out of our yards. That's what they expect from us. That's how stupid they think you are. They expect us to remain asleep, to be stupid, and to remain irresponsible for our own country. They think that they can change the narrative from these immense failures into this huge success of an airlift. Oh, it's so great. We got so many people out. Well, guess what, hard charger? You wouldn't have had to get all those people out if you had executed a plan that didn't look like it was drawn with a crayon by a five-year-old. You're gonna try to shift that narrative over to COVID or white people being uh, domestic terrorists or something of the like. We witnessed the continued balkanization of America based on uh, a radical Marxist, postmodernist, fundamentalist ideology that I call wokeism. We are dividing ourselves on racial and economic grounds. We, the American people, bear responsibility for this. Do we still believe in freedom? Do we still believe in freedom? That is the question. Look how easily we've forfeited so many freedoms over the past year and a half in the name of COVID. How we've allowed the police state or the surveillance state rather, ever since the passing of the Patriot Act. <clears throat> we've allowed the, authoritar the authoritarian left. Don't let these people continue to call themselves liberals. They are not. They are authoritarian leftists. They are fundamentalist in their ideology. And I will argue on a separate podcast that they are very similar to the Taliban. Very, uh, very similar. Surprisingly so. And I'll lay that out. I'll lay that out separately. I won't get into that tonight. But stop allowing these people to steal your country from you. And stop yielding to them when they change the meaning of words. Stop yielding to them when they make up rules in colleges and in education and in local governments. Stop yielding to them when what they are doing makes no sense, call them out. All right, folks, America needs heroes and warriors. They need, America needs all of us to pick up our portion of the load. We are responsible, we did this, and we have to take responsibility for our country. But what can I do? Well, funny you should ask. I want you guys to go to the John Curry YouTube channel, and I want you to look for our new Heroes Boot Camp conversation series. This is specifically so that we can uh, discuss many issues that I think the American people should be interested in and should be thinking about. And we're gonna talk about strategies that you can implement in your own world so that you don't have to feel intimidated about what can I do about against this great big machine. We're going to talk about how you can affect that great big machine. Let's remember folks, America is a one-off in history. And if we lose America, we're never gonna get her back. So let's not lose her because we failed to act in our time.
wherever you are. I hope you have a great day, a great afternoon, a great evening. I will see all of you later. Bye. We're John and Stacy Curry from Semper Savage, a veteran-owned, family-operated company making the finest marinades and dressings on the planet. But we're more than just another company. Family's our core. It's our greatest joy and our greatest strength. We inspire people through personal connections and savage patriotism. We believe in the greatness of America. We travel all over the U.S. and have experienced the fundamental goodness of our people and the strength of our communities. We're achieving excellence while tirelessly pursuing perfection. We offer four delicious all-natural products. Savage Caesar, Savage Balsamic, Savage Centurion, and Savage Cider. They're Italian-style vinaigrettes that are more than just marinades or dressings. They're equally at home sautéing in the pan, baking in the oven, on the grill, or as a drizzle or dipping sauce. Take your food to the next level with Semper Savage. It's homemade flavor in a bottle, and you are gonna love it. Pour it on.